I'm gonna make a custom shower curtain using my art because the other day while I was in the shower, my phone died, so I couldn't scroll through beautiful art. My phone takes so long to charge, so I have to finish this. So I start with my sketch, but before I do that, I need to gather reference photos. I gather a bunch of reference photos, and I'm gonna take what I like from some of them and take out what I don't like. I'm gonna just use them as pose reference and as inspiration for my character. While I'm sketching at first, I kind of stay loose and messy because I'm gonna refine it and fix it later. And I know it can be kind of tedious to do one sketch and then do another sketch and then do your inks, but I promise you having that good foundation will help your artwork in the long run. It also helps you have awesome and crisp line art. For this one, I want the scene to be a sunny day, but also kind of windy. So I wanna show that using her cape and her dress flowing in the wind a little bit. I love the way this sketch is coming out and I think she looks beautiful. So now it's time to start inking my character. I use a combination of thick and thin lines. Thin lines where I think there's gonna be more light and thicker lines where I think there's gonna be more shadow. Having a variety of line weights can make your art look crisp and makes your line art look beautiful. I also stylize my line art by using these little dots. I usually use it where I think there's gonna be something that shows through something else. So in this instance, I want her leg to show through the dress just a little bit. And no, I'm not making it see-through, perverts. I just want the impression that there's a leg underneath that skirt. And I love the way that looks, but you don't need it. I just think it adds a little bit of extra detail and style. I finished my line art and it's time to work on my base colors. This is Zuri. She has her signature pink hair and blue cape. My favorite color combination. I drop the colors into the character, separating them into separate layers. I do this so I can use clipping masks when I'm doing my rendering. So I don't have to worry about getting out of the lines. In Clip Studio Paint, to make a clipping mask, you just make a new layer above the layer that you want to have the clipping mask on and just press this button. And boom, clipping mask. For this Photoshop users out there, it's as simple as clicking and holding Alt on your keyboard and pressing this line between the two layers that you want to have a clipping mask with. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I do the rendering, I need to work on the background. It's important to do your background first so that you know where the lighting is coming from and how the light and shadows will interact with your character. For example, if you have a big pole in your scenery, the light might not hit your character or it'll cast a shadow on your character and you need to know that. But for this one, I'm gonna have it nice and bright and sunny. Now I do want a huge cloud behind her and I want that because it helps with framing the character. Framing the character shows what's the most important thing in the image, and that's the character herself. Shark? Hey buddy, what's the matter? Oh, I know, you wanna swipe through Tinder on my phone while you shower. No? Oh, you wanna look at amazing art, but my phone is dead. But don't worry, I'm working on something now and it's gonna be amazing. You, you wait. I continue with my background and I love the way that it's coming out. Now it's time to work on all that rendering. I make sure I add all those clipping masks that I mentioned earlier. My first clipping mask, my first layer, I use a soft brush. And I know a lot of people don't like to use the soft brush because it can make your work look muddy, but I lower the opacity so much so that it's barely noticeable. And I know what you're thinking, oh, but eh, if it's barely noticeable, then why do we use it? And I use it because I use cell shading. And having that very, very subtle soft shadow underneath your cell shading can make it look a little bit blended and help it pop. <laughs> I do the same process with my light layers, but there's one more step. I have to add rim light. I love rim lighting and it helps your character pop from the background.
Now I worked so hard on this line art and I love my line art, but I don't like those harsh black lines. I don't want that black color. So I'm gonna use another clipping mask on top of that one and color those lines in. And I know you can just lock the pixels on that layer and just color over it, but I like to use the clipping mask because if I make a mistake on that or I don't like the way it looks, then I can just delete it and I still have my black lines. I select the color closest to the line, darken it a little bit, and then color over that line. And in some cases, I use the exact color of the character on the line so that it looks more 3D and more like lineless art. That's just my style. I like to use a little bit of both. You can do whatever you want. I love the way this is coming out, but we're not done yet. I need to add some of my special effects. And this one, like in most of my work, I'm gonna use chromatic aberration. To do this, I move over to Photoshop because it's way easier in Photoshop than it is Clip Studio. In Photoshop, I select all my layers that make up my character and I make a copy of that. So I have her as backup in case I mess something up. It's always important to have a backup. So I save my backup and I merge the layers of my new copy and now I have a flattened layer of just my character. I make a duplicate layer of that and then I go to channels. When I'm in channels, I select everything, go to one of the channel colors and just move the image slightly. And then I do it again for another channel color. I go back to RGB before I go back to my layers and then I erase where I don't want that effect to be because it can be pretty overwhelming. I also add halftones and crosshatching to my artwork as well as some color dodge to make things look more bright. So I finished my artwork and... Now I need to put my order in for Society6 to get it on a curtain. And so I have to wait for it to get delivered. That was fast. Now I can look at a beautiful artwork in the shower, even when my phone is dead. And that's awesome. I think. And if you like this video, you can watch this video right here. I promise you, you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching. Did you click it? Did you click it? Go click it.